Well, from a do-nothing man to a spend-nothing wife, folks, we got all the news that's slightly better than nothing on In Case You Missed It. Our first story tonight is about a Japanese man named Shoji Maramoto. I worked on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Soji good. Morimoto, who said his family always accused him of being a do-nothing, so he turned it into a career. I think this is pretty fascinating. Yeah. He is known as the do-nothing rent-a-man. <laughs> now, here's what he does. He charges people to come and stand around and do nothing. Hmm. I think it's got to be a government job, no it doubt about be. it. Yeah. <laughs> One of those guys out on the highway. You yeah, know. that's right, you know. Um, this human pet rock has stood in freezing cold <laughs> to be the audience for a street musician. He has been paid to share a birthday cake with a lonely person, and he accompanied shy people on shopping trips. But Keith, don't expect conversation because that's too much like work. Yeah. He will reply briefly to small talk, but mostly he just stands around doing nothing. You, so, kind of like Trey Corley. Kind of like Trey yeah. Corley, yeah. I think I could work there. And, uh, I mean, you could take him uh, to a dinner party and claim that he's your husband. And if you ask him to do anything, he'll just tell you that he doesn't do anything. All right? Yeah. yeah, just like a lot of husbands in this audience tonight, I'm sure. <laughs> if we ask their the wives. Anyway, he's very busy doing nothing because he's book solid. This is what's amazing. I think he needs to save up if he wants to retire. It's really not so strange. I mean, think about it. Yeah. Here in Congress, or here in America, we've got hundreds of people, and they make six-figure incomes for doing nothing. Doing nothing. They're called members of Congress. That's Great what they work are. If you yeah. can get it. Huh. <laughs> Almost stepped on my punchline on that one, didn't I? <laughs> I was wondering where you were yeah. going with that. <laughs> yeah, I was too. Obviously, I wasn't sure. <laughs> well, police in Cape. Coral, Florida, answered a disturbance call to the local Waffle House where a customer reported having a meltdown because his bacon wasn't cooked the way he likes it. Mm, oh, I know. Oh, he was so upset, he reportedly cursed at the staff, shouted racial slurs, and had to be tasered. <laughs> now, in his defense, his bacon wasn't cooked the way he liked it. But here's the problem with that. He's now facing charges of assault, resisting arrest, and... Big surprise, disorderly intoxication. Uh -huh. Alcohol could have been involved. Could have been involved in that. Yep, if found guilty, he's going to be scattered, smothered, and covered. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> speaking of embarrassing Woo! dining companions, there is a man's Reddit post that went viral after he complained that his wife went on a thrift kick and became so cheap, so cheap, that she brings her own meals to restaurants, pulls them out of her purse, and then asks the staff of the restaurant to microwave them for her. Oh, no. Wow. Well, I tell you, the good thing is her bacon is at least cooked the way she likes That's it right. that way. I think her bacon's a little overcooked. I think her bacon is, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. What? Well, he says he's embarrassed. You think? Yeah. 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 Now, other husbands say, he's the luckiest man in the world. In his wife's defense, she does leave a tip of 20% of the price of her glass of water. <laughs> and the staff, hey, they don't have to clear the table because she takes all the utensils when she leaves. Yeah. All right, laugh all you want, but after three more years of Joe Biden, we're all going to be doing this, okay? <laughs> so... Finally, that's the favorite word of this audience when I say, finally, how'd you like to live in a dream house made famous in a hip movie? Well, the bad news, the movie is the 1984 slasher flick, A Nightmare on Elm Street. No, no yeah. I don't even want to go in there. Now, the house was where the main character, Nancy, lived when Freddy Krueger invaded her dreams. This house recently sold in L.A. for $2.8 million dollars which was a bargain because it was listed for three and a half million dollars. But they had to slash the price. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Did you hear that <laughs> slash the price? Slash the yeah, price. I heard it. <laughs> the movie makers only use the exterior if that should help the buyer sleep any better. So that way the buyer doesn't have to worry about Freddy Krueger. 
But the real nightmare comes when you realize you're now a tax-paying homeowner in California. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm going to end your nightmare by cutting this bit a little short. But hey, until next time, always remember, we read the news. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe, and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts. <laughs>